So this is how 2021 is going to be, huh? Frost all over the grass. It's about 26 degrees right now. Any standing water is frozen quite hard. However, despite how cold it is and has been recently, the momentum of spring has begun. As you can see, daffodils are coming up. So anyways, I'm out here and despite the cold temperatures, I'm kind of hoping to see some herps today. The, uh, the main thing that I was really wanting to do is get some tin out here and I've done that. I laid out a couple of spots that will hopefully produce snakes for us later in the season. But today, I'm just gonna kind of wander around the swamp now that I've gotten that done and see if I can turn up some salamanders. So it's supposed to warm up to around 60 degrees today. So it might even end up being kind of snaky. We'll see. So this area I'm in is actually habitat for the Eastern mud snake in the Georgia Piedmont, which is super cool. Cause that is a species that is really uncommon here and something that I'm really hoping to find. I've been looking for them for a long time in this area and uh, have not had any success. I've seen pictures of them by, uh, you know, talking to the locals and asking if they've seen them. So I've confirmed that they're definitely here and now I just have to turn one up, but that's probably a quest for a warmer day. I'm gonna walk around though and try to flip some logs and see if I can turn up some salamanders. I was really hoping that there would be some turtles out today. I probably wouldn't be able to get my hands on them, but there's normally painted turtles out here and I haven't seen any yet. Made a bit of a strategical reassessment and I'm back home now. And uh, the anoles are out. First herps I've seen all day long are green anoles hanging out in this tin stack. I'm hoping we'll see some salamanders here today too, but I just, I wasn't finding anything where I was earlier and I decided, you know, I've, I've got, you know, I know my yard better than anywhere else. So if there's anywhere I had a chance of seeing something today, it'd be here. Sure enough, an anole. I'm really hoping that we can find some salamanders and maybe even a snake if we're lucky. So I'm going to go hit the rest of my tin and maybe flip some rocks too. This is probably one of the anoles that y'all have seen a couple of times, but uh, just this little tin stack I have here on the edge of my yard. And uh, there were three of them in it today. So hopefully we'll see some more stuff. Here's a little skincella to get, but just to put it into perspective, the air temp is probably about 55 degrees right now. And this metal is almost hot to the touch. That's what the layers are for. It keeps the uh, the further down you go in the stack, the cooler it is. So even if the top layer is a little bit hot, sometimes the middle and bottom layers will be cool enough to actually have stuff in them. But on a day like today, you don't really have to worry about that as much because It's nice and cool out. The uh, the top layer isn't too hot. It's just surprisingly warm considering the air temperature and the fact that there was ice on the ground this morning. And sure enough, here under this piece, which we found a four-toed under our already, there is another four-toed salamander. We do believe this is a different one because this is a gravid female. You can see how swollen her back end is there. She's definitely carrying eggs. And I, I would think she would have moved down somewhere lower to land. Maybe she's planning on laying them here, I don't know. Uh, animals make mistakes sometimes, just like people. And uh, if she laid her eggs here, they almost certainly die because there's no water downhill from here for over a mile, probably. But I'm assuming she knows what she's doing, so she'll probably be making her way down to the pools to lay her eggs uh, next time it rains. But yeah, nice big gravid female four-toed salamander here under this piece of tin. So I'm going to leave her to it. I'm just going to gently lower this back down and keep flipping. 2021 and the end of 2020 has been a weird time here. And that the salamander that I'm seeing the most frequently is four-toads under rocks. And I normally don't flip these guys. I see them off. They're definitely one of, if not the most common salamanders here, but I usually see them out and about when it's raining, crossing the road or walking around, just shining in this area. But uh, here's another one, second one of the day. This one's a little male. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to pull him out to put his rock back. 
Here's one more look at this guy before I put his rock back. You can see he's a lot smaller than the other one. Definitely not as robust, but I'm just gonna let him crawl back under. Well, it looks like that's gonna be it for today. Disappointingly slow, even though it was cold. I was expecting to see at least a few more salamanders, but what can you do? It has been a really long and cold winter here already, and I'm ready for it to be over. And uh, the clock is ticking, so any day now, it's gonna start warming up a little bit, little by little. Early January is generally the coldest and worst part of the year to herp here. Um, and unless we get rain, and then it's really good for amphibians. But this year has been really dry, aside from the couple of nights I've been out. And uh, when it's not wet this time of year, it's generally quite cold. But anyways, I'm going to call it a day here. I plan on getting out again this weekend. Uh, it's not going to be this warm, but I'm going to be targeting stuff that will be a little bit easier to find regardless of the temperature. So I'm probably going to cut straight to that from here. So I will see you guys then. Well, put simply, today's one of those days where no one in their right mind should leave the house. It's gloomy, it's cold as hell, 39 degrees currently, and uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. So, I'm out here walking around. This winter has been one of the worst in recent history for me. It hasn't even been, like, particularly cold, it's just constantly kind of cold. We haven't had any nice days interspersed in the cold days recently, and it's driving me nuts. So, I'm out here today exploring an area that I've only been to once, and uh, I really want to spend more time here in the spring, so I'm kind of scouting it out. And uh, speaking of spring, one of the things I'm looking for today is the spring salamander. I should be able to turn one up, regardless of the weather, because they spend most of their time in the water, like this creek right here. So I'm going to be spending some time poking around in the creek and seeing if I can turn one of those guys up. And anything else will be bycatch today, but uh, I'm not really expecting much, so we'll see. Spring salamanders are one of my favorite salamanders to look for in new places. I've never seen one here before, but uh, they should be in this area. You can see there's a lot of undercuts under the bank here where there's kind of water coming up from underground. This main part of the creek actually flows out of a small lake uphill, so... It isn't entirely spring fed, but it should be good enough for spring salamanders. So I'm gonna poke around in this for a while and see what I can turn up. So one of the things I look for when I'm looking for salamanders is good quality water. And one of the ways you can tell that the water is healthy is you see all sorts of little bugs in the water. I believe this is a stone fly larvae. Let's see if I can get them to crawl. You flip the rocks over and these guys are stuck to the underside of them. Super cool looking little bugs. But these are the larvae of flying insects, I believe. I don't know terribly much about them, but they're kind of interesting, and uh, they're definitely something that I want to be seeing when I'm looking for salamanders. It's a good sign. Alright guys, here's our first herp of the day, and something that's usually pretty reliable when it's cold. This is the spotted dusky salamander. I actually saw a bigger salamander go down a hole right there that might have been a spring salamander larvae, but tons of leaves in here. Check that guy out. Kind of dull, but they are one of the more common salamanders. Anyways, I'm just going to put this guy's rock back and keep looking for that spring. We're probably going to see plenty more of these guys throughout the day. There's a slightly larger spotted dusky. These guys are, like I said, quite common. But there are probably two species of dusky salamander in this area. The spotted dusky and the seal salamander. There's a nice little board right there I haven't flipped yet. But this guy was under this one. Just randomly boards in the creek. A pleasant surprise. Anyways, you can tell these guys apart from the seals because they're a lot smaller and they have the super pronounced flecking there on the belly that gives them their name, the spotted dusky salamander. I'm going to attempt to flip this board on camera, which is probably a mistake because of how fast spring salamanders can be. Nothing. This rock too looks pretty good. These are a little dry. Normally I expect to see springs under the rocks that are kind of partially submerged. This place is really awesome, and I definitely need to get out here on a warmer spring day. As you can see, there's a bunch of stump holes and dead pine trees and deadfall. Super good looking habitat for snakes, but I'm going to save that focus for a warmer day. We kind of stick to the creeks today. Unfortunately, I stirred up the water a little bit walking around. I placed my foot there, and it sent a cloud of mud downstream. But right there, this is in C2, that is a southern two-line salamander that was just crawling around in the creek. Kind of, he tucked a little bit further back in there, but 
I'm guessing that's a female looking for somewhere to lay her eggs. Gravid female two-line salamanders will lay their eggs on the undersides of these rocks. And a little bit further down from the two-line salamander is a three-line salamander under a rock. This is in C2, I flipped the rock back. But these guys are obviously closely related to the two-line salamander, both Ericea. It's kind of weird to see them living in this kind of rocky habitat, though. Three-line salamanders generally prefer more sluggish, swampy habitat from my experience but anyway it's interesting these guys get much bigger than two line salamanders this guy is probably four inches long they have much longer tails and obviously three lines instead of two but i'm gonna move this guy and put his rock back all right guys here's one last look at this guy i took a couple photos of him because i don't see these guys terribly often i don't think i've photographed one in this area so anyway it's gonna put him back under his rock and keep harping Check this guy out. That is a huge spotted dusky. I thought it was a seal at first, but uh, under a perfect rock, I would have expected a spring under that rock, but nope. Anyways, I'm gonna put this guy back. Not a salamander, but something you see a lot of when you're looking for salamanders. Crayfish. I'm sure there's plenty of different kinds here. I have no idea how to tell them apart, but this guy's cool looking. This is such a cool little creek. The ledges. I imagine all the salamanders tucked up under there. There's a really good rock right there I'm gonna flip. This one might flip too. That one's too big, but this one is a pretty good spring salamander rock. Yep, that is a larval spring salamander, I think. It's gonna be hard to catch them while recording. Oh no, it's a dusky. Oh, got him. He jumped out and escaped. As predicted, dusky salamanders have been quite common in this creek. There's really not much better than walking through the woods in a creek and looking up and seeing an old barn fall in and collapse in the woods. So I was working my way around, kind of poking around, seeing what kind of tent and stuff is here. Flip this little brick and there's a beautiful little left under it. This, of course, is the terrestrial life stage of the eastern newt that you've seen in my videos in the vernal pools. We see these guys fairly often crossing the roads and such, but kind of a treat to flip one. I see way more of them on the road than I do any other way. But beautiful, brightly colored. These guys are actually very poisonous, and that bright coloration is to ward off predators. This is probably the neatest thing we've seen today, in my opinion. But uh, this is kind of a jackpot. I'm really, gonna, I'm really looking forward to being able to move some of this tent around in this area and uh, see what kind of snakes I can turn up. But nice little newt. I'm gonna keep working the creek after I poke around this barn a little bit, so. Here's yet another building uphill from the last one. I guarantee you this is gonna be a super snaky area in the spring. All right guys, we're back down at the creek once again in search of our main target for the day, the spring salamander. However, I'm super glad we found those barns. I made some awesome flips that I think are going to be super productive in the spring. So as I've gone further and further downstream, it's becoming a little bit more discouraging because I still haven't even seen a larval spring salamander. Typically spring salamanders aren't a hard species to find, but finding and getting your hands on an adult can be a little bit tough, especially when we're talking about an area that I've never found one and they might not even be present in. But I'm gonna keep at it a little bit longer. I'm definitely getting tired after hauling all that tin around and uh, I'm out of water. So I'm gonna have to call it here soon. This is kind of weird. I'm working my way back up the creek and I flipped this log that I missed before. And underneath it was this guy. It's a big, healthy green frog. Bullfrog look-alike, but as I've explained before, you can see that dorsolateral fold right there that runs down the side. That's how you tell this is a green frog, not a bullfrog. This is a fairly big green frog. They're much smaller than bullfrogs, too. And uh, this is a pretty good-sized one. But I'm going to put it back under his log. Based on the fact that I found this guy on the way up and I did not see him on the way down, maybe I'll have better luck with springs on the way back. We'll see. Now, this is something I've never seen before. Those are salamander eggs. I don't know what kind. I'm guessing two-line or desmog. Maybe three-line. Who knows? But, uh... They lay their eggs on the undersides of these rocks, and considering how many rocks I flip in creeks, I'm surprised I've never seen this before. 
I didn't see another an adult salamander under there, so I'm assuming she's either away or uh, swam away when I flipped the rock and I just didn't notice her. But that's really cool. I'm going to gently put this rock back down and uh, wish these guys the best of luck in hatching and becoming adult salamanders. All right, guys, I'm back at home now. Uh, it's probably been a pretty slow video, but this time of year, you can't really control the weather, so I have to make do with what I'm given, basically. Um, but it was pretty fun. I managed to get out a couple of times despite the cold weather and actually find at least a few herps. So probably going to wrap this video up here. I will go ahead and let you guys know that there is some good weather coming this way later this week. So after this cold front passes through, we're going to get a little bit of rain and some warmer temperatures. So the next video will hopefully at least be a little bit more exciting. Might not get any snakes in it yet, but we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode.